Um, I think most of you know me. I'm Betty. I'm the uh, board uh, president of Senior and Disability Action, and I want to welcome everybody today. Um, you know, February is uh, the shortest month of the year, and at the same time, it has the most in it, just as our agenda today does. Uh, we have um, uh, Chinese New Year, which is coming up of uh, very shortly, uh, celebrating tomorrow and through the week, and also uh, Valentine's Day on uh, Sunday. And then of course, the whole month dedicated to uh, Black History Month. And um, I'm very excited to see our agenda is taking up a lot of important SDA issues, our advocacy agenda, uh, talking about the vaccine from a um, Black perspective. And then um, we're gonna have a wonderful panel uh, of um, black activists speaking. And um, I just wanted to um, uh, read one quote from, I think most of you, certainly our seniors know uh, this person, uh, Congresswoman Shirley uh, Chisholm. And she um, uh, was a wonderful, not only uh, feminist, but of course, uh, kind of a pre Black Lives Matter person. And um, she, one of her many quotes is, I never cared too much what people say. What I'm interested in is what they do. And I think that this is about what we are. Everybody here is not only says, but it, they do as well as SDA. Uh, we're there for everyone. And we not just say what are, is important that we wanna have happen, but we actually go out and do it. And I think that that is, uh, you know, is, is really what makes our organization so, so important here in San Francisco and beyond San Francisco now. And now I, I wanna introduce uh, Greg, Greg Ledbetter. Uh, he's going to um, do the check-in. Uh, we have a check-in question today that we wanna kind of go through quickly, but for everyone to participate. So I'll hand it over to Greg. Uh, thank you, Betty. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Greg Ledbetter, and I'm a peer a housing advocate at uh, SDA. Uh, since it's African American uh, month, um, our, our checking question today is what is your heritage or lineage? And I guess I'll start it off. Um, I'm an African American male, uh, which I think. I think I have some uh, Italian blood because I'm uh, the lead from my uh, family is from Louisiana in the South down there. So we figured it might have came the other way rather than in Africa. So that is me. Um, I will just go with the top of the screen and go with uh, Dawson. Hi, uh, Greg. I have my hand up real quick. Uh, I will share what my lineage is, but also wanted to remind people that subtitles are available now. Uh, if you need them, uh, click on uh, caption and show subtitle, or you can click on the link that Olivia Captioner sent in the chat. Uh, thank you. My lineage, I am Korean. Um, I don't divide between South and North because I think that's arbitrary and uh, the US did it. So um, I'm going to stop there. Please call on others. Um, uh, uh, how about, well, uh, Harry? I'm not clear, are we talking about heritage? Yes, yeah, or lineage. I'm, pardon? Or lineage. I'm a uh, South Louisiana Cajun heritage on my father's side and German and Welsh on my mother's. Uh, I'm just going down the line, you guys. So it's not anybody in particular, but most of the staff is at the first two rows. Peter? Uh, hey, um, Peter, SDA staff, um, and you see him. And I, uh, a little bit of a mixed bag, um, some English, some French, um, but you know, going, going back further, um, we're either Italian or Spanish, not sure. Um, yeah, back to you, Greg. Thank you. Go ahead, Fred, you're next on the list. Well, I am African-American, black identified. I know that there's Choctaw by way of Texas 
and possibly Mississippi <laughs> on my mom's side, but I celebrate my blackness. Um, and I'll choose Sarah. Uh, too many to name, so I'll just focus on the main ones. Uh, Ashkenazi Jew and Irish. And there has to be some German in there because my mom's maiden name is German, but mostly the other two. Yeah. Um, let's see, I will pass it to Ligia. Um, so I don't know, I got everything. You know? <laughs> I, got, I got native, I got black, I got uh, Spaniard. So I just, um, I, I claim my Nicaraguan, you know, roots. That's it. But I, I got a little bit of everything. Uh, and I'm going to pass it to Maria. Okay. Guillen. <laughs> Gracias. Okay. Hi, everybody. My name is Maria Guillen. And um, my uh, heritage is Mexican. My grandparents immigrated uh, here in the early 1900s. Um, my ancestors um, are also mestizo, which is like the has said, we're, we're a mixture, right? And um, I'm very, very proud of that. And I will call on Cora. You're on mute, hon. Uh, I miss Cora. You look very <laughs> festive, by the way. Good morning, I'm Cora. I identify with African American black. I'm from Texas and I don't know what else I'm mixed, but I'm sure mixed with something because they said many of us came across the wood pile. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, I'll pass it on to Ty. Hi, you here? Yeah, it's, I don't, yes, it just takes me a while to find it. Uh, Appalachian and Mennonite. And I passed, <laughs> well, that's, my father's side is Appalachian and my mother's side is Mennonite. Um, okay. Alan. Alan, I'm uh, Polish mm -hmm. and Romanian, mostly Romanian uh, uh, Jewish immigrants. My parents came, from, oh, my grandparents came from the old country. Um, I'll pass it on to Rhea. Rhea. Hi, um, I'm Rhea, um, and I am Indian. My mom's from India, and my dad is white of Irish descent. Um, and my Indian side, some of it comes from what is now Iran, but that was many, like, thousands of years ago. Um, and I will pass it to, let's see who hasn't gone yet, um, Pat. You're on mute, Pat, sorry. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, I'm way back. Uh, I'm English and way back. I'm obviously mixed, but I don't know what it is because I haven't done ancestry ancestry.com yet. <laughs> okay, I'll pass it on to is Freddie there? Yes, is I'm here and I will I've already shared so we can Oh, go. okay. Um Harry? Oh, I went also that I'll just pick I'm for you, Pat. Go. I'll pick Tony. <laughs> oh. Hi, my name is Tony Hines. On my mother's side of the family through Haiti many generations ago. But ultimately, I'm sure most of my lineage is from Africa. So I claim African American and Black. And I don't know who's with or not. Greg, you want to keep calling on people again? Virginia? Has Ligia went? Yeah, I already went. Uh, hey, girl. How about uh, Jane? Jane, I'll call on Jane. Thanks, Greg. Oh, I'm um, Chinese American. Even though I have a Japanese last name, that belongs to my husband. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, okay, as we, because Jane is on, on the phone. So, so uh, next we we'll go with Bruce. Uh, can you ever hear me? I'm, am I? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Terry. You're on mute right now, though, Bruce. Yeah. It got muted. We heard you, and then you got muted, yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. Okay, yes. good. I can't quite figure out this technology. Um, my uh, family's from the Eastern European, Russia, Prussia, Poland, and uh, Jewish <laughs> heritage. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, can you see Sorry, but here? before oh. we continue, uh, can I can I just say that um, uh, what we are doing because some people just joined. Um, so what we are doing is uh, we are talking about, about our heritage, um, we, um, and for interpretation, Lupita Flor, si pueden um, en el, en la parte de abajo de la computa de la computadora o la tableta, allí van a encontrar este um, la bolita del mundo ahí está para que escojan el canal en español por favor gracias en el okay, teléfono la bolita del mundo sorry um, okay Carlos, usted puede ir arriba en el teléfono algo así dijo Greg En el teléfono, o porque usted está en el teléfono, porque no pudo usar el otro aparato, ¿verdad? Arriba, usted va a encontrar allí, a donde dice más, dice more, ahí va a encontrar una cosita que, que le va a decir. Ay, yo no sé cómo explicar eso. Sorry. Pues me no. están dando pero ni así. Y la chica <ríe> es, habla a quién nació. No, no, mijo. Y no ve dónde dice, ay Dios, no sé. La bolita ahora dice interpretación en inglés. Es casi lo mismo. Sí. Okay, I'm not sure what's happening with the translation or interpretation, but... Um, yeah, what, what's going for, on? I can't, for, I don't understand anything. Okay, we so are just, trying to get connected some people that uh, they, they don't find a connection for the Spanish. And we're trying to help them. What's it? Pero no pone. Mm. Okay, um, so just for the sake of time while we're working on that, um, I thought that was worked out at the beginning, but I guess there's things I don't know about. So um, just for the sake of time, Rhea suggested that everyone, um, as you're able, type into the chat your lineage or your heritage. Does everyone agree with that? Okay. Okay, so then we can move on with the net with the next portion. Um, Rhea is uh, we have a new person working with us. For those of you that don't know, so Rhea is going to introduce introduce them. All right, thanks, Freddie. Um, so I am very Bye honored. Bien. Gracias. Um, our newest staff person, Regina Lynn, and Regina is our mutual aid organizer. So if any of you have been involved in the mutual aid project, either getting groceries or dropping off groceries or anything else, Regina is gonna be bringing all of those people into our organizing work and hopefully you'll meet them at upcoming general meetings. Um, yeah, so Regina, do you wanna just um, say a few words about yourself, how you're doing or where you come to SDA from? Okay, good rising everybody. I'm so grateful to be here. Happy African American History Month, Gong Hei Fat Choi. Um, yeah, Chinese New Year. I love Chinese New Year because it's based on the the moons, which I um, um, I associate with um, women and um, feminine power. So, um, first of all, I'd like to speak about in relation to identity and acknowledgement that we're here on Ohlone land and also an acknowledgement of African-American History Month, I welcome those past and present who hold the multiplicity of identity across the African diaspora, which is inclusive of the term Black, African-American, 
and BIPOC. There's an unspoken history of the intersection of First Nation people and African people through genealogy, intermarriage, etc. And it shows up as many American Blacks can name tribal knowledge and their lineage, um, as Freddie did when he spoke. And I acknowledge my identity as BIPOC, African American woman with lineage in the Choctaw and Chickasaw heritage. I come to this work um, through a trajectory of food justice and food organizing and, um, and should I say um, food sovereignty organizing in East Oakland. And so I'm very, very happy to be here and looking forward to learning what I can about these present communities that I am a part of and find myself in and learning and working with everyone and um, extending SDA's reach across into the East Bay. So as again, I said, I'm grateful to be here in this space and learning and working with everyone. And I will definitely be seeing everyone and pulling on your ear and asking your advice and information and um, suggestions for how do we move forward and make this happen. So thank you so much. Thank you, Regina. Oh, um, thank you, Regina. I, I just wanna say the part of the reason why this particular question was chosen. It was definitely in honor of Black History Month. And I don't think, I, I think there may have been one person that said that so far, and that was Regina. I could be wrong, but happy Black History Month, everyone. <laughs> and I just wanted to acknowledge the part of the reason was because we wanted everyone to feel included, but we also wanted everyone to know how diverse SDA already is and how important this conversation and what we're talking about today is, like Betty said, it's so related to our advocacy agenda. I'm proud to say and happy to say that you know, SDA has embraced this and is including anti-racism in everything, every aspect, every program. Um, so our voices are so important. And I'm really grateful to um, African American Racial Equity and Social Justice Alliance, which will be talked about a little later um, for participating in this and all our Black um, identified uh, members. Um, so just take a look when you get a chance in the chat. And I think this is a conversation we should probably have um, moving forward and talk more about because I'm hearing and seeing things that I've never heard of. I didn't know it was a lineage. I didn't know it was, you know, a place um, that existed. So uh, thank you so much. And Greg and Cora take over. Thanks, Fred. Okay. All right, welcome. We'll move right along on the agenda. Um, Greg and I are going to bring to, to you uh, our after the program for the seniors and disabled persons and some of the things we are about is offering to seniors and disabled persons is uh, free Wi-Fi, and uh, we'll speak a bit about the SROs and our vaccine equity, and also uh, you'll get a chance to know the organ <clears throat> organizers and focus on what you hear because we'll be inviting you at a later time in the program. So. We will now listen to Greg bring a portion of our activity. Okay, yes, actually, um, I, I was actually, I thought the core I was supposed to do how to get involved. Uh, but um, what, and that's actually what I want to do. Um, I'm sure most of you guys are already aware of uh, what SDA is. Uh, um, is about and what we do. But uh, just in case you didn't know, uh, we have different groups that you can always uh, come out to to get involved. Uh, senior Disability, uh, uh, the Senior Disability Survivor School, 
uh, this course teaches seniors uh, the, uh, and persons with disabilities on community resources in housing. Uh, then we got HAT. HAT is the Coalition of Seniors uh, and Persons with Disabilities uh, and Caregivers and their community, uh, community agencies to advocate for expansion of home care services and quality health care. Then we have Mad Mob, San Francisco, uh, mental health uh, consumers working group, uh, a group of, I'm sorry, I can't read my own writing, oh, uh, 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 a group of mental health um, consumers organizing for rights and dignities and uh, access to services. All right. Uh, then, of course, there's uh, uh, Consumer Rights for Community Living, or CRACL, uh, help seniors and people with disabilities navigate the uh, complex web of home and community-based services uh, in order to keep living at home. And that's for people that are really, well, us, okay. Uh, then Tenant Justice, organize, uh, they organize for pedestrian, uh, blah, blah. Uh, yes, they organize for pedestrian safety and advocate for better public transportation for uh, seniors, uh, disabled, and all of San Francisco. And of course, there's also procedure. A uh, procedure is a group of seniors and persons with disabilities uh, of African American descent. Uh, they are advocating for black reparations and allows uh, other people in the commu our community to have a voice in the process. Uh, so in order, if you want to get involved, uh, you might consider if you haven't become a, a member already to uh, become a member of SDA. Uh, it's only $20 a year, but it's a sliding scale. If you can't, if you can't afford it, uh, they can work something out with you. Um, and you could probably sign up if you go online to our website. Uh, oh, and you're also welcome to attend any of the meetings that, that uh, or groups that uh, SDA uh, offers. So with that. I just want to add, um, Jessica, do you want to read what you wrote in the chat about the advocacy agenda? Sure. Ah, That's the fault. Unless Cora was, I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, I just saw you type that in there. I was just typing it so the people had something to look at as Cora was talking about it. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So it's uh, expanding rental subsidies for seniors and people with disabilities, win free Wi Fi and supportive housing, and ensure vaccine equity for people at high risk for COVID. Thank you so much, Greg and Cora for um, doing that and introducing that. There's um, the next portion of our agenda and we're pretty close to time, just four minutes off. Um, we have our one of our valuable um, community guests. Um, it's DeAnthony Jones. He's here from the city and county of SF COVID Command Center. He's the chief Ex equity officer and he has some updates and some information about um, vaccines and COVID. I've been able to work with him as, as some of the members have on um, various uh, task force and, and what we're doing. So Anthony, the floor is yours. Welcome, thank you so much for coming. Thank you, thank you. I wish I could see, well, I wish you could all see my face rather. Um, I'm down here at the COVID Command Center at Moscone. And I am DeAnthony Jones. I'm the Chief Equity Officer here. I started in this role uh, in December following Jafria Morris, who was the Equity Officer here. And I've had the pleasure of working with some of you uh, in my role outside of uh, COVID, you know, before COVID hit, which I was working as a neighborhood liaison in the mayor's office, but I've now shifted over to doing some violence prevention work. Um, as far as my day job, but I have been activated for over the past year um, as a disaster service worker. And this is the assignment that I've graciously taken on. And uh, just before I, I go on, there's a, a lot of work that 
uh, me and Freddie have been working on even great. Led better. Uh, how you doing? Good to see you again. Um, around issues of equity. So before I got this assignment as chief equity officer, uh, was working as well with the Human Rights Commission, and I'm still working with the Human Rights Commission under the leadership of Cheryl Davis um, around uh, issues around equity in the Black community. And of course, working on getting and gathering community input at the time for uh, the reinvestment that the mayor and now president. Shaman Walton had committed to um, and redirecting some funding from our law enforcement agencies here. So I've uh, been around those tables and uh, as this is Black History Month, uh, we know that uh, the history is gonna inform our future, but also the historical struggles persist. And this is, um, this is something that of course we see in COVID but we also see across the board with other health inequities too. So, you know, I, I wanna take this time to really call that out, that we have work to do, but we've had work to do before COVID and we'll have work to do during COVID and after COVID around ensuring health equity. And that's why I am here. And of course, Freddie has been a part of those spaces. I'm also working with the Mega Black COVID-19 Task Force, uh, which is where me and Freddie were on Tuesday night. Uh, actually, and uh, a lot of the work around equity will have to be centered around getting community voices and hearing what the community wants. And I always look at my role here as not, in terms of the vaccine even, uh, not telling people what they should and should not do, not telling folks uh, you should take the vaccine, but what information do you need to feel comfortable in taking the vaccine? What what uh, issues or concerns do you have? And how can we educate you? How can we make sure that A, you are um, able to access that information? And B, how can we make sure that you are able to access a vaccine should you want one? And those two conversations have to happen together. I always say it's not a matter of messaging, it's a matter of collaboration and communication because messaging is me telling you what I want you to hear. Collaboration is me working with you to form what it is that needs to be heard. And I think that's gonna be important in how we roll out this vaccine. I will tell you that supply is low, as you know, and we have been slowly but surely trying to open up to more and more individuals. Um, I'm here at the Moscone Center. And of course, last week, um, this started to open up as a mass vaccination site. Uh, for our seniors 65 and older, uh, as well as our priority emergency workers as well. And then uh, if you've heard from the mayor this past Tuesday, in fact, uh, we will open up here in San Francisco to tier 1B, which includes food workers. Uh, it includes child care workers and extended uh, health care workers as well. And of course, IHSS workers are able to get vaccinated too. But one of the things that we have to continuously push for and I know, I, I, I don't know if she's on this call, but uh, I know Nicole Bond, the director of the mayor's office of disability um, has been, you know, reaching out and advocating because I think it's a shame that we don't have a higher priority for our uh, accessibility plus community. And excuse me, that's just my personal term. I, I don't like to use the term disabled because all of you um, are, are magical and I have, folks in my family with um, alternate abilities as well. And I, I like to, to lean into that. So it, the accessibility plus community, the access plus community, they should be prioritized at a higher level. And this has been a conversation and an issue that has been statewide as it is the state who are setting the tiers. And we need to make sure that we are also able to go to, to people where they are. And that's a strategy that's actually being worked out with and Nicole Bond has offered suggestions and I just wanna thank Nicole because you know, it, it, it's really important that we not overlook that at some point we have to make sure that we can get to people with the vaccine instead of expecting folks to come to us for the vaccine. And this is not for our, not just only for our seniors, we should be having this discussion, but those who are living in SROs, a mobile vaccination strategy, we have to be strong with that because we have to make sure that folks feel like they're being brought into the conversation around vaccination. And, you know, it's a personal issue for me. And, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll just share this. 
I had back in October experienced a month like no other. Um, it started with the loss of my brother and then October continued a week after with the COVID infection of my father, which we then as a family started to worry about. And this was in the midst of planning my brother's funeral. And then we found out a week later, uh, third week of October, it was actually uh, Indigenous Peoples Day. And we found out that my grandmother also had contracted COVID. And, you know, I was already deployed as a disaster service worker, but it became even more personal because it hits different when it hits your doorstep. And, you know, that isn't to say that, that isn't to say that, like, I, I, I didn't take this seriously <laughs> beforehand. I mean, I'm, I'm right smack dab in the middle of it. But when it hits your home, you start to see what the needs are, how families respond, how disrupted the household becomes and the gaps that needs to be filled. And I'm using that experience to inform how I advocate and how I approach. But it's also about just something that I think is the golden rule. And, you know, I think it's, it's, it's also um, just something that we should live by and that's hearing what we all have to say. And I do respect that. Um, I, I, I got a comment here, so thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I got a comment here, but I, I really, really just want to come here to say that um, it is my job to make sure I fight with you and fight for you. And Nicole and I will definitely be having more conversations, but also with this group as well. Um, thank you so much, Freddie Martin, for, for inviting me here and even giving me space to be here. And I wanna stay in communication with you all to make sure that we're looking at not only vaccination, but at, at some point recovery too, with a more equitable lens for all of these communities and all of the communities that you represent. Um, I am proud, I'm a proud black man, but I'm also a proud public servant too. And I am definitely excited to be working with you. A lot has been happening, the mobile vaccination strategy is starting to slowly but surely roll out. SROs are in that conversation. And of course, we need to continue advocacy for our disabled community and those who need extra access as well. And we need to make sure that we're pushing the city to bring this vaccination to the trenches, as opposed to not just opening up vaccination centers, um, both mass and community. So I just wanna say thank you. I'm looking forward to working with all of you. I'm looking forward to continuing to work with Greg and Freddie, um, as well as Nicole uh, on the city side to ensuring that we all have access and that you all can look forward to healthy and vibrant lives outside of COVID. Thank you, okay. Anthony. Thank you so much. Um, that was good information and I saw a series of questions. We did originally have that in the agenda that there would be a short question and answer period, but um, I wanted to know if a, a couple of the questions could be answered. Um, Carmen, thank you for your comments. Um, there was something that was written earlier, I think Regina. Yeah, I have it uh, for you. Okay. Um, D'Anthony, uh, Regina writes, uh, if you are anti-vaccine, uh, anti uh, what can you do to strengthen your immune, uh, respiratory immune system with uh, alternative healing folks like uh, folk medicine? You know, this is actually a, a great question. I've, I've, I have actually have not been asked that before and I don't speak from a place of of science, so I don't want to give you misinformation in terms of um, how you can. Uh, I, I will tell you that I have been, I mean, just taking my multivitamins and vitamin C, but of course, COVID, um, it, is, it is a viral infection. And, um, you know, I, I, would, I, would, I would say, and, and, and being um, conscious about vaccines, right? I don't even call it like anti-vaccine, but I call it conscious about vaccine. And that sometimes means that you're making that conscious decision not to get vaccinated. And like I told you at the top of uh, my comments, 
you know, I think my job is just to make sure that there's access and information available to get to that conclusion. But as far as what you can do, um, I can't offer that from a medical perspective. But what I will say is that in the absence of, of, of taking a vaccine, it is important and we have been messaging this and, and communicating this with the groups that we have been in contact with. No, yeah. ma making sure that in the absence of getting vaccinated, that you are still practicing social distancing or not <laughs> physical distancing, not social distancing, but physical distancing, as well as Ray, no. uh, wearing a face covering when you're out in public and staying indoors if you do feel um, like you're coming down with something or you, you just don't feel good. Just making sure that you're following all of that guidance. Um, if you are not going to take a vaccine, which is totally your choice, but I think it's just important that we at least make sure that folks have all of the information they need to come to that conclusion. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to add that Nicole um, said that uh, she will put the vaccine fact sheet in the chat. Mm, and, yes. and then DeAnthony, I just had um, one more question about the information of where to get vaccinated and you know the, the COVID sites, if that can also be put in the chat. Um, and I'm so I'm um, you know, I was disheartened and sad to hear about your your family members um, having COVID and um, healing and strength, you know, um, in dealing with that. Um, I, I thought there was, I thought we were gonna have more time for questions because I know there's a lot, but if you can put the questions in the chat, um, yeah. we will save them and we will forward them to DeAnthony and um, Nicole, and we will get back to you on the answers. Is that okay with everyone? Yeah. And, and definitely, I appreciate, you know, all the work that, that happens here. I'm going to put some information uh, in the chat. Um, now, a, a lot is still evolving. The news might change tomorrow and we might have a great update. But um, until then, we definitely will continue this advocacy and making sure that um, our seniors and those with disabilities are able to access this vaccine. So thank you so, so much for the time. I know you got a long program, but I'm actually going to be putting some information in the chat while I'm here for another 15 minutes. Thank you. Great. Um, so this kind of goes directly into Dawson's portion. Yeah, no matter yeah. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, DeAnthony, I'm sorry. Um, uh, Dawson, go ahead. Great. Um, before we go on, wanted to check if interpretation is going well and everything uh, Carlos, are, are no, you it's not question? going well. It's yeah. not going okay. well. I already sent a phone number for everybody to connect through the phone number. It's um, okay. And, and, and but Liliana, I don't know if she has seen the phone number yet. Um, okay. I sent her in the chat the phone number directly to uh, Liliana. So if if she can call them, so they they can have interpretation because they they. They are there and they are not able to follow what is going on with the meeting. Okay, great. Yeah. Uh, well, we I'm are sorry, recording it. We are recording it. So there's a possibility that for the things that they missed, we can go back and maybe have a special meeting with the interpreters or translators so they can get all the information. Yeah, I think we need to connect right now. If you want to name the phone number right now, Ligia, so people can hear it also during the meeting before I jump yeah. on. Okay, uh, phone number is 1-800-1-800-511-8124 y el código de acceso es 351-3776. So, 1-800-5... Díganlo más despacito. Bueno, 1-800-511-8124. Sí, eso ya lo agarré el otro. Y el código es 351-3776. 351-351. Liliana. 
has joined. ¿Qué más? 3776. 37776. No, son Seis, dos siete, 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 Carlos. 3776. Gracias. ¿Y cómo lo marco si estoy en el teléfono? ¿Me puede escuchar ahora? Sí, sí, señorita. Okay. Um, ¿Y todos tienen acceso? De, 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 de sí, la tipo? puedo escuchar. Okay. ¿Usted a mí me puede escuchar? Sí. Ok. Sí. Ya no tengo que marcar el... Sí, y, y, y si tiene preguntas, uh, por, favor, el... Ale... por favor, por um, favor, what's it called, the raise hand, Ligia, can you... Sí, Carlos tiene una pregunta. Carlos, Carlos, usted no tiene que hacer nada porque usted sí le puede oír. Los demás no le pueden oír. Bueno, pues, okay, okay, uh, okay. Back to our meeting. Thank you so much for your patience. Um, we really need to figure out a better way to include our Spanish-speaking uh, members so that it doesn't feel like it's a separate meeting, and we're con continuously working it through. And we did have a beginning. Um, Kind of overview of how to do that um, with Liliana, our interpreter, but it is a continuous work on access and um, we hope that soon enough we will have just kind of really equitable participation from all people no matter what language they use and feel comfortable in. So, um, but thank you very much again, De Anthony, for your wonderful presentation. And it was really great segue to our action because um, De Anthony did mention some uh, vaccine planning that's going on, but we also know that uh, a lot of people with disabilities who are younger than the age of 65 and who are high risk uh, are uh, were excluded from the kind of months long per a plan uh, that uh, California was preparing. And then uh, just, I think last week, last Monday, uh, Governor Newsom just did Slow down, Dawson. Slow down. Slow down. Government, New Governor Newsom uh, decided to uh, throw out that plan out the window, right? So uh, here is, yes, the Vaccine Equity Action Toolkit that Jessica put in the chat. I will also send the shorter version um, and it's a national action toolkit. So if you click on it, you will see all the different ways that you can uh, target either President Biden, uh, the, government, the, the National Secretary of Health and Human Services, uh, Chair of White House, et cetera, et cetera, to ask to include people with disabilities and also prioritize Black Indigenous people of color who are not explicitly prioritized in uh, vaccine planning. Uh, it is ridiculous to uh, hear uh, um, statistics from the CDC, how 90% of people over 65 who have received a vaccine are white. When Black Indigenous people of color communities are experiencing COVID at so much more of a higher rate, Especially in San Francisco, we see Latinx and Black communities being affected and uh, vaccine planning without racial equity lens and without disability access lens is um, really um, basically protecting people who, is not, who, are, who do not need extra protection. Okay, I'm still talking too fast. So um, I'm gonna wait till Liliana catches up. Sorry about that, folks. My, I'm trying to slow down. Um, yes, so what you can do? You can do plenty uh, for Valentine's Day. We have a special Valentine's, um, Valentine's Day action. You can send a physical or online virtual Valentine card. Um, post it on Facebook or any social media and tag uh, Governor Newsom and Director of California's Department of Public Health. Um, I'll try to put their contacts in the chat or if someone else could do that, that would be very helpful. Uh, the instructions are in the chat now. So uh, tag Governor Newsom on your virtual uh, Valentine's card 
to say happy Valentine's Day, uh, Department of Public Health of California. But mm -hmm. have you forgotten disabled people who need the vaccine? Um, oh, um, Dawson, uh, the Spanish uh, Liliana wrote in the chat that it helps to breathe between- <laughs> Yeah, I'll make sure to breathe, thanks. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, um, we have different uh, beautiful Valentine's Day card images, I think courtesy of Jessica, um, to post on your social media. You can use those pictures or make your own, <laughs> but there is of course uh, also a mailing option. So you can mail a physical Valentine's Day card, which you can make yourself, or you can buy and you can send it. Um, and just to, you know, give some love, but also keep them accountable uh, to make sure that vaccines are distributed equi equitably and we get um, all information that we need to make a full informed decision about get, being able to get the vaccines. But first, they need to be available, right? So thank you. I'm gonna pass it on to Freddie. Sorry, it took longer. Oh, no worries, Dawson, you did a great job. That was a lot of information to say in a short period of time and it was important. Um, um, just in the interest of time, uh, we have a break scheduled for now, um, but I'm just going to power through this and we won't do as much as we had planned but um, on this portion, but as you know, in, in, in a lot of our meetings, we include actions or something, um, you know, that where we're actually doing something in our meetings. So to relate this to racial equity and anti-racism and SDA's advocacy agenda, Jessica's cracking up. She's having a conversation with Lee, I think. <laughs> But, but um, it's about the housing elements um, 2022 with the SF planning department. Um, and I think Jessica, are you, are you gonna be able to share your screen? Is your computer gonna allow you to do that? But I typed- I'm very early. sorry, there's, there's too much going on. I just put in the chat. I didn't mean to distract with the laughing. Our cat just attacked oh. the vet. But um, I will pull up the housing element now. If you start talking, I'll, I'll be there in a second. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> that was, a, that was okay. So, um, so the housing element 2022 is through the SF planning department. And for those of you that can, please do pull this up on your screen or your device. Hi, Peter. Welcome, Peter. Peter's from MHASF. Um, Everybody. And, <laughs> welcome. If you, um, if you go to sfplanning.org, type that into Google, and you get the, the website that comes up. It says sfplanning.org. Then in the, well, right there, Jessica, on her, on her screen, she has Housing Element 2022 update. You just click on that, or you type in the search box housing element 2022, and it'll take you to this screen. It may be, it may look different on your phone or a tablet, <clears throat> but you just click on that and it'll give you this information. So what is the housing element? And then you click on learn more. Um, and what should come up is again, it'll, there's a portion that um, talks about regional housing needs. And this is a wealth of information. When you hear organizers or people presenting about stuff, even me, a lot of the statistics about housing come from here because this is where the, the, the uh, information is gathered. So you too have the power to access this. It's not just for us, it's for everyone. And it's so important. There were some listening sessions. There's a series of things that are happening. It started last year and it'll be going on for three years, but this is one of them. You can fill out surveys, you can participate, you can say your part in your piece about what you think is wrong with the policy or get information on how to get connected. There'll be other things that we're doing with SDA in the future. But when you click on that, um, Jessica, can you scroll black, but back up? Um, there's housing programs, housing affordability uh, strategy. There is something that says the survey is now closed, but there's other surveys and other things that, um, there it is, share input. So I don't know if you can see that on your screen, but if you click on, um, 
where it says recognize the historical, racial, ethnic, and social discrimination in government, share input, click on that. And then what will come up is this. So you can, so there's, there's a lot of information. It's a lot to read through. And we are actually planning, um, we had planned to do this in the past, but we're actually planning to do this with the SDA members um, and our allies through uh, university and also some special um, teach-ins. But they are going to come and visit with us at one point in the next few months so that we can talk more about what's available. And this is important because it helps shape the housing policy and reverse the effects of redlining and all the things, home loans, there's all kinds of things that were specifically happening to communities of color, black people, African-American people to keep us out of home ownership, which is that um, wealth equity. And this is a way to correct it. So I won't take up any more time because we are at 11.01 and um, Vanessa was actually going to do a song earlier and this portion was going to be a relaxation song, but Vanessa, if you're ready, we can go straight into that. And for those of you, I'm just gonna ask if we can forego the break, but for those of you that need to stretch right now, or you have to, you know, take another <laughs> sort of break or get a snack or something to drink, you know, just move your hands around, roll your head, don't do anything unsafe. You can stand up. This is our SDA stretch moment. Regina will be doing lots of this and Tony in the future <laughs> for all of us. And then go do what you need to do if you need to go. But um, Vanessa, are you ready? Are you still here? Are you queued up? Vanessa has a special song. Vanessa is one of our newer members. Well, I don't know if I can still say that now. It's been about a year. Um, and she's, and she's a, a fierce advocate and organizer in the community. So go ahead, Vanessa, I'll just let you go ahead and say what you need to say to introduce yourself and the song. Oh God, I guess you didn't get my email. I was like, oh, it's okay, I don't have to do anything. I'll just sit and listen to this <laughs> meeting. But this is one of the songs that I love from Stevie Wonder. It's called Love's in Need of Love Today. So I'll just do a portion of it. Um, it's gonna be a cappella because I have to get all these connections going. So it goes like this. Good morning or evening friend. <clears throat> Read your friendly announcer. I have serious news to pass on to everybody. What I'm about to say could mean the world's disaster could change your joy and laughter to tears and pain. Is that love in need of love today? Don't delay. Send yours in right away. Hate's going around with many hearts. Stop it, please, before it goes too far. The force of evil plans. <laughs> Possession. And if you let it destroy everybody, we all must take precautionary measures. If love and peace you treasure, then you'll hear me when I say, 
all wounds and loves in need of love, love, of love, of love today. Don't delay, send yours in right away. Don't you know that hate, hate's going around. It's breaking, it's breaking, breaking many hearts. Stop it, please. Before, before it goes, it goes too far. Don't you know that love, love's in need of love, love, love today. Don't delay, send yours in right, right away. Yay! Yay! Beautiful. Thank you. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you, Vanessa. Lovely. Lovely. That was beautiful. And uh, I love that song. Siobhan, can, we book, can we book her, please? <laughs> Leave your booking information. <laughs> She's going to type that in the chat. <laughs> Siobhan said you brought her to tears. So thank you so much, Vanessa. And, you know, uh, you know, this it's a part of our culture. So, you know, that's that's it's a part of what we do. Um, you know, a lot of cultures, music is such an integral part and um, Vanessa, uh, thank you so much. We're gonna um, go into uh, a portion where um, Jamel will be facilitating this. And this is the portion where the Arcija members. Um, uh, I'm sorry, that was Carlos. I think he has an, a question for the interpreters. He said or he wants to sing. <laughs> Oh, he wants to sing. Okay, maybe maybe for the next one. <laughs> for sure. Um, um, but uh, yeah, so this portion is going to be facilitated by Jamel, and um, it's the Black Members pan Panel. Everyone involved um, is with African American Racial uh, Equity and Social Justice Alliance, and um, they had a large part in this. We were asking for uh, somewhat of a listening session to hear about like what solutions we're working on to solve the problems and um, take it away, Jamil. You were on mute there, Jamil. Hey everybody, I'm sorry. My name is Jamil Halia and thank you for the song, Vanessa. Hey everybody, my name is Jamil. I'm in San Francisco. For those that don't know, I am a, oh, big screen, huh? Okay. I'm a, a, a I'm a, a quadriplegic. I'm in a wheelchair, been in a wheelchair 20 years, uh, since 98, spinal cord injury through a uh, auto accident in 97, injured in 98. So here we are in 22. And I uh, actually didn't get really, really active in advocacy in terms of, as it relates to disability, over, just over the last couple of years, but I have been always involved with uh, racial justice, uh, specifically uh, justice for black people. Uh, and uh, I just want to share that little bit about me for those that don't know me. And uh, Cora, Dorothy, Dharma, Greg, there may be some others on the list that are gonna share their uh their their uh vision and hopes for racial justice and things that they've experienced and so on uh after i do i only take a quick moment thank you guys for uh allowing me the opportunity here and initially i mentioned uh i i was dealing with a racial injustice when it comes to black people with housing my personal experience uh, because I, I live in housing and I've seen uh, as president of the Tenant Associ Association in San Francisco for a couple of years down here at Clementina, 
I've seen how uh, tenants are handled by management when they are black and when they are non-black. Uh, and I've seen it for myself and I've been at the table when these decisions were made and when discussions were had, and I've seen the difference. Today, there are people that are housed, that have committed crimes, attack people, even management, uh, violated leases blatantly, and they're still here. I've seen others who've done far less who are black who are not here. And that action is taken swiftly. Again, being at the table, being president of the Tenant Association and having eyes to my job is to look at this. I'm not being hypersensitive. I'm seeing what I'm seeing. And uh, that was my initial uh, share that I wanted to stress that I wanted to focus on. But I'll try to be brief with this. Uh, I, I, I really feel my main struggle and what I fight against is just not just that, but that type of treatment when it comes to Black people in general. And I call it the targeting of just Black people. And today, initially, COVID was, initially it was, well, it was something originated in China and then we can go into that on another platform. The point is, before it was over with, Black people were the face. Black people are the face of everything bad. Everything. Prison and pipeline, Black people. Crime, Black people. Eating pizza in a house, getting killed, Black people. Oops, I was jogging, Black people. Selling lemonade, Black people. Black people are the target of everything, period, dot. So my fight for justice is just the just, just getting, fighting against that. And I have no opinion at all. Like the brother said, his job is not, he's not a medical profession. His job is not to tell you what to go do. And mine, mine isn't either. My mother took the test, I took her. I personally don't, am not. Why? Again, I am not one to sit here and spew out statistics because I don't know the stats. But to be honest, I am one that don't believe statistics either. So I don't wanna hear the stats. I consider my source because all I know is historically, at the end of the day, I am the problem. So my fight is always towards that. And it, it will probably always be towards that. The targeting of black people and black people being the problem of everything. So that's where I sit. And when I move, I move according to that. It's not, uh, I think Cesar Chavez moved according to what's best for his people. You know, and there's nothing wrong with that. That makes sense, okay? We all know in the wild, when the pack moves, the giraffes don't go hanging out with the hyenas. It makes sense. It's not personal. You gotta take care of you first, take care of your own, and then you can mobilize after that with others. So uh, I hope that, uh, you know, came across well with, uh, with you guys uh, or not, <laughs> right? So oh, that was a great foundation. That's exactly where we needed to start because you know, like the the foundation of things is that that is the truth. So um, Jamel, go ahead. You can introduce the next person. Thank you yes. for that powerful testimony. Absolutely. So Cora is up next. And Cora is going to share her experience. Uh, how you doing, Cora? Good morning. Good afternoon. Yes. Um, as a, a Black woman coming from the South, and believe it or not, I did graduate from high school here in San Francisco, but 
it, we must wake up and share with others. You know, it's something like it's just shoved under the rug. When we hear the word anti-racism, uh, I mean, how are we going to handle it and how others feel and think and come to the table with a discussion and it's very depressing and brutal uh, to black people. I have two children, they were born here. I don't uh, teach them hate or dislike. I encourage them to study hard, go to school and be just toward everybody. Do unto others as you have them to do unto you. I've had uh, ex experiences that uh, in the South, but when I came here, I brought no animosity. It's just to work with others and pray for them to see the light. But if you've never been in a situation or suffered racism uh, openly, personally, it's kind of hard to identify. I know there are suffering people in every group. So it's high time for us to come together and work together for justice for all. And I find SDA is a good place uh, to be able to do that. Thank you. Thank you, Cora. I just want to um, thank you, Cora. I just want to um, just remind everybody just so so everyone knows, um, I really appreciate the way that Jam Jamel opened it. The, the title of this portion is Black Members Pan Panel Anti-Racist Campaigns. So I know that, um, you know, the personal, the personal histories are, are very important. I know just from meeting Jamel recently and from knowing Cora and working with Cora and SDA that um, they are very solutions oriented too, <laughs> which is the next part of what we're going into. And Cora, one of Cora's things, like she was talking about her kids was, um, is, you know, working on the political activism. And she's been very instrumental. She was a large part of why we had our senior and disability university on this last elections um, cycle in November. Um, so I just wanted to, you know, just to, re just to, you know, add that part in there as the next three people go, because our time frame is we are now at 1118 and we, we have until 1140 to get other people's responses and inputs and um, stories. So like originally agreed, oh, hi, there's Maurice. I just want to acknowledge a few few people yeah. coming in late. Maurice, he's one of my Skywatchers brothers. And Cheryl Davis, yeah, the director. Hey, Maurice, um, director yeah, of HRC is here. Shaki Shakira is here. Also director of racial equity at um, Human Rights Commission. So welcome. Thank you so much for coming. Um, you will all have a, por a, a time or a portion where you can speak as well, but it's great to see you. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, and um, uh, so next, I think on the list, Jamel, was it um, Greg or Dorothy? And Dorothy's yeah. here, so Dorothy and then Greg. And then we'll open yeah. the discussion to everyone. Yeah, Dorothy's up next. Hi, Dorothy. Dorothy. You're muted, Dorothy. We can't hear you. All right. There you go. All right. We're here now. <clears throat> My voice is just about gone. But anyway, I'll start out with a uh, words to a song and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to sing it even though my voice is gone. Hold on just a little while longer. Hold on just a little while longer. Hold on. Just a little while longer, everything's gonna be all right. That has been our plight 
Uh, well, actually, since I was born, and uh, well, even before that, you know, there was a beginning. Uh, we've always suffered from economic disparities, um, social disparities, racial disparities, disparities in justice. As Al Sharpton always say, every Saturday morning at seven o'clock, no justice, no peace. No. Yeah, no justice, no peace. And he also says this life is not what you start with. Life is what you do with what you start with. As many of you know, um, because of the news, except in San Francisco, <laughs> because you don't get the news in San Francisco uh, about homicides. Homicides is a uh, murders in the black community is very high. And uh, there were uh, just in January this year in Oakland, there were uh, 15 just in January. And uh, Chicago actually has the really highest rate um, I've forgotten what year it was, but there was one year when there was 500 and something homicides in the same same month. They had a, a war going on there. But anyway, the and the the homicides uh, is is because of just what I just told you, and that is the racial disparities, economic disparities social disparities and uh, disparities uh, in justice. And as Jamil just said a while ago, it seems as if um, we are always at the bottom, bottom of the list. And uh, uh, we have a, a lot of problems because of uh, uh, what happens to the family structure you know, because, um, uh, for example, there is a um, there is a group of women back in uh, South Carolina. Uh, they started a a wealth a wealth building school for uh, the women, for the mothers, and the uh, for the black women. And uh, these are the statistics that they gave. And that was 70% of white mothers are married. 32% of black mothers are married. And 52% of Hispanic mothers are married. And as you see, by the 32 is still because of uh, the same things that I told you, economic disparities, social disparities, justice and all, you know. And so what happened is very, very hard on men and boys, black men and boys, because they all feel like they should be able to support their families and uh, take care of their families and that kind of thing. And the system is also against them because what happens is uh, welfare is something that invades the um, black community, welfare. And that welfare, uh, I guess that's what you still call welfare. I mean, money, free money. In other words, when you give people free all the time, what it does is it it, it, it takes care, takes away their self-esteem, takes away their self-esteem. And um, for instance, uh, if you get um, 
rent subsidies, which they really need. They really, really need. What happens is uh, that takes away uh, their, um, uh, their self-esteem. Self they they uh, will keep the house instead of buying a house because a buying house seem is really, you know, scary. You know, it's fear. It's fear. <laughs> of, uh, <laughs> And Cora, I, and, and I fear, I wish I had more time, but we love your story. Can you give us a little more in closing to have others respond to what you're saying? Oh. You're yes. Okay. Uh, the answer to all of this, of course, is two words, love and forgiveness. Thank you. Thank you, Cora. I just wanted to add real quick, Jamel, that was Dorothy. I'm and sorry. Where, I'm sorry. That's okay. And where she where she was going with that, because in preparing for this, she really feels like there needs to be more programs. There needs to be things that are family building, youth building, and to support those that are most targeted, targeted in our community. Um, and she's really big on the anti-violence campaign on February 26th. We're having the Arcija. It's a black community event. And um, she actually was instrumental in arranging the anti-violence portion. Maddie Scott will be one of the speakers to talk about her movements, anti-violence campaign. And she's interested in bringing the Black Police Association in black police officers to figure out how we can work on this as a whole, because we all know the issues with police historically and black people and, you know, um, and the not yet, Maurice. We're going to open that up in just a second. We have Greg. Okay. He's on the agenda. He's just going to present his portion. And then we're going to talk a little bit more about the solutions and other other people's experiences. We're running short on time, but thank you, Maurice. You'll, you'll yeah, be on actually, just a minute. Okay. <laughs> Actually, I'm glad that, that uh, uh, everybody was able to contribute. Jamil, excellent job, uh, as well as the uh, our other two panelists, Dorothy and um, and I'm sorry, um, Cor. I'm sorry, Cor. <laughs> you know I love you though. Um, <laughs> listen, the the facts that the uh, our other two panelists has put together is correct, but the facts. Uh, remain, we've always identified what's going on. We've never not known that one, we was uh, we was getting uh, cheated housing wise, we was getting cheated uh, um, financially in, in the jobs that we work in, uh, we're uh, um, cheated medically because we're not getting the same medical care that everybody is. So um, that's why I'm um, on Mega Black, because now that we've turned around and identified what the problems are, we need to find some solutions to, to uh, make them work. Um, one of them is is uh, housing equity. We need to find a way for Black people to not only become renters of housing, but to actually be able to uh, buy a house. Uh, we need to turn around and because uh, the African American community has been so traumatized by all the things that's gone on, uh, even in, in our lives, uh, everyday living, let alone traumatic incidents that might involve the police or other people, uh, outside entities. Uh, those wounds need to heal in order for us to move forward. We need uh, agencies that are available to turn around and cater to just our African American people that are culturally sensitive to what we have gone through and the, the, the problems that we have right now. Uh, we need agencies to work with these young kids and start developing their minds so they won't develop that racial slant and be able to get over the stigma that so many generations has already gone through. So. Um, that's why, and I'm, I'm so glad that Director Davis 
and the rest of the mega black crew is on today because that's what we're working on right now and i'm proud to say that we are making some progress we the, the road's going to be rough and it's going to be long but we're all in it together and it's it's a beautiful feeling to know that your brothers and sisters can sit down and find some solutions so with that um uh, uh, freddie i'll turn it back to you um, that was a perfect segue. And uh, since I actually, since I did invite um, uh, Cheryl Davis and um, Shakira um, to speak br uh, briefly on um, some of those uh, solutions, I'm not sure, you know, what that would sound like or what that would look like. But I also wanted to be mindful of everyone who um, has things to share. I think Maurice. So if everyone can put their hand up or, you know, if you know how to put it up in the chat box so we can do this um, as succinctly as possible, we have about 10 to 15 minutes to hear everyone's input and ev what everyone has to say is so valuable and important. And I would encourage people to look at the chat because there's a lot of support and a lot of, you know, things being said in support of what everyone's saying. And this is clearly evidence that we need to have more of this within SDA, within our community. Um, so, you know, so we can work on this um, together. So did you want to say briefly, um, one of you about, uh, you know, HRC roundtable and the things that are working and how we can get support or what's needed in support in that area from our community to help continue this um, reparations and justice fight for us that we've been fighting for so long. Um, Shakira or Cheryl, Director Sh Cheryl or Shakira. Um, I will be really, really brief. <laughs> Thank you, Freddie. And I'm so grateful to um, to be in this space and the wisdom and knowledge that was dropped. Um, Greg, Dorothy, um, I, I feel like I need to miss Cook and um, Miss Cora, um, just really grateful. And I think Freddie, I said this to you the other day, keep showing up, keep pushing, keep challenging us to do this um, and keeping it at the forefront. Um, same thing with you, Gregory. I, I just appreciate that because that's going to be what makes us do this. And so I'm jumping off this call, but I'm like with a request. I'm super excited. I want to have Greg, um, Miss Dorothy, Miss Cora, um, Jay, Jamel, like come and do this again. We're doing a series during this month around we speak for ourselves and I'm just so moved by um, what I heard and we need to have that shared and so I want to continue to think about how we partner how we amplify how we elevate and how we um, sow seeds and plant resources in that so I will follow up with you Freddie because I want Miss um, Dorothy specifically to sing some more songs and teach us the songs and all of my life is tied to some church song that I learned and um, how I get through those moments. And I, I also would love for her to share about Allensworth and why she took people on those trips there. And Miss Cora's story, I loved her, uh, believe it or not. I moment. So I, I'm gonna stop because I got so much in this little bit of time and I wanna keep it going um, and build on that so much to learn. Thank you so much. Uh, um, Shakira, um, I saw a couple of hands. I know Maurice wanted, okay, um, go ahead, go ahead. Thanks. I'm just going to take be super, super quick. Um, my name is Shakira Simley. Happy to work with Director Davis at the Human Rights Commission. I just want to uplift, happy to help build any intergenerational um, relationships and connections, especially with my generation. Um, we have so much more to learn, so much, there's so many stories and I don't want those to be lost. Um, and I'm really, well, um, ugh, really excited to be here to be a listener and um, facilitator and connection between my generation and yours. Um, so those, that, that advocacy, that legacy never gets lost. Um, so thank you so much. And I can't wait to see you all um, working with us in the mega black space and all the other opportunities coming up uh, for leadership and organizing with our black community. 
Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so I know we have Maurice and thank you for coming. Thank, thank you both for coming. Um, I know we have Maurice had something that he wanted to say. And then Carlos, I think I saw your hand up. Was there anyone else who, uh, Rebecca? So I don't, can someone write that in the chat really quick? <laughs> Maurice. If there's time, only if there's time. <laughs> Maurice, Carlos, Rebecca, who else wanted to comment or share or question? Okay, so that would it'll Maurice go right ahead. Um, you're muted, Maurice. Maurice, you're muted. Maurice looks like he's on the run right now. <laughs> Yes, he does. So, oh, there he is. You unmute it. All right. Yes, I'm sorry, but I, I, really get, I really get upset because the, the, I believe that the more for them to ever say, that better for them to give us reparations for what they done. But the system man, right? Not just the library and beating on, but talk about. Putting the 30 prison in California. The six man race in my generation face. Then now you bring people from out over here and now they new black people. Come on, man. Man, it's upsetting, man. I I I'm 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 one of the guys who always believe for you. And that's it. Thank you, Maurice. I'm, 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 I'm typing some of what you said in the chat and I totally understand and I feel you. And I want you to know that this space and SDA and the people here, um, we, we have an all black racial equity group that's a part of SDA, but um, uh, yeah, we have that space and you can always talk to me. It's, 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 so, so we have some support and I want you to get involved with Mega Black and SDA in a huge way, because it's your voice is important and the things you're saying are true. Um, so uh, uh, I think um, Carlos and then Rebecca. Carlos, did you were you raising your hand or were you just trying to adjust your device? Yeah, I thought you had to go. Uh, you're muted. You're muted. You have to unmute. Hello. Hello, hello. Pat, we can hear you. <laughs> Did you have something you wanted to say to her? Oh, question? yes, yes. But I was just, I'm sorry, I was talking to the screen. <laughs> <laughs> so Rebecca's going to go first and then you can go. Okay. Carlos is not able to. Oh, there he is. It is, it is. Ya, ya en este momento puedo. Eh, antes que nada, buenos días. Mi nombre es Carlos Castro y soy de México. Y mis padres eran del estado de Guerrero. Yo soy de Cuernavaca, Morelos, la ciudad de la eterna primavera. Y quiero decirles que estoy muy contento de estar con cada uno de ustedes. Estoy feliz, pero más con la comunidad eh, afroamericana. Yo no creo en las razas, porque razas solamente hay una, la humana, ¿verdad? Eh, nos, nos diferenciamos en color, yo soy cafecito, pero a más de dos o tres personas les he dicho que a mí me hubiera gustado ser negro. Quisiera tener ese cabello así como algodón. Me hubiera gustado ser negro, mi piel más oscura que como la tengo ahorita. Pero no, lamentablemente eh, soy latino. No lamentablemente, pero... Ah, a raíz de que quisiera ser negro, ¿verdad? Soy latino y también la comunidad latina ha sufrido bastante, bastante discriminación. Además, con el pasado, eh, no quiero decir ni su nombre, este, este Biden, como insultó a los mexicanos, 
cuando muchos de nosotros hemos venido a trabajar, a hacer algo por el país. Pero olvidándose de todo eso, envío un abrazo fuerte a cada uno de ustedes afroamericanos, un beso, que Dios los bendiga mucho. Yo creo en Dios y con Dios todos somos iguales. Dios es imparcial, no es cruel. Y esta crueldad del racismo y de la discriminación pronto va a acabar porque se acaba este sistema para empezar un sistema nuevo donde ya no habrá más desamor, donde ya no habrá ni clamor ni dolor y la muerte no será más. Gracias. I'm sorry, but is there someone that's supposed to be translating simultaneously so that the non-Spanish speakers could hear? Because I couldn't hear any translation. I just heard Carlos. Oh. In Spanish. Okay. Um, um, Empiezo otra vez. Uh, no, Carlos, está bien. No se preocupe. Um, Liliana was doing translation. Um, but Carlos was saying, basically, I'm going to rephrase because sometimes Zoom doesn't allow the interpreter to switch channels that easy. But, oh, um, oh. Uh, I was what, supposed to click the interpretation box for English, huh? Yeah. Uh, okay, so sorry. I'm not sure if anybody, anybody was able to hear the, um, the interpretation that um, was made. But um, Carlos was saying that, um, that he's... He's um, happy to be here and that he uh, love to um, stay here and share this space, especially with the uh, Afro-American, um, African-American uh, uh, Black, and, and that, um, that he um, admire. And he was talking about how um, he only believed in one race and it's the human race. Um, and that he um, he wants to uh, oh sorry <laughs> and and he he wants to send his love to each and every one uh, of the um, African American descendants here and it um, he also uh, talk about how hard it is um, uh, for Latinx um, and that that um, the discrimination goes on and so that, that we can, you know, overcome that. So basically, you know, more or less, <laughs> thanks. Awesome, awesome. So Rebecca, Pat, and then Jamel. Oh, wait, what time is it? Oh, it's almost 11.45. Okay, um, can we do, can Rebecca, Pat, and Jamel have one minute each? Is that enough? Is that fair? And then we can go into the yeah, next part. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay. I feel like, I feel like I haven't let Dawson co uh, co host with me. <laughs> ¿Por qué no me tradujo Viviana? Okay. So oh. basically, what I was going to say is now reminded me because it is Girl Scout cookie season, um, and I was buying for uh, my family some Girl Scout cookies. I used to be a Girl Scout when I was younger. I was raised Jewish, even though my mother is, my father's not Jewish, um, but they grew up in Miami. But in the Girl Scout troop, we were Jewish like me, um, Hispanic, Cuban, some Nicaraguan, Jamaican, Haitian, African-American. So I was very fortunate from a young age to be kind of raised with a diverse um, group of girls. So in the Girl Scout troop every once a week from age seven on. So I think it's really great. It reminds me when it's Girl Scout cookie time like this, it reminds me it's great from a young age to kind of have kids grow up in that environment with diversity and making friends of different cultures and races. And that's really the best way to do it, I think. <clears throat> Not everyone can, but that, that I consider was really fortunate and I'm always grateful for and I'm still friends with them to this day so many years later <laughs> thank you Pat and then Jamel oh yeah okay um I just wanted to say that um roughly over 50 years ago I worked for a civil rights organization and the staff was all white 
And I do believe that the board of directors was all white. Only I think there was somebody Jewish, but everybody else was white. And so many of the problems that we had then that we didn't think we'd have now still exist. And we focused on housing. And we used to try to trip up landlords who denied housing to black people because he said they were already occupied. And we'd go and we'd interview and they'd offer the unit to us. And then we'd set it up so the people would walk in at the time that we were offering it to us and we'd say oh we don't want it but maybe these folks do so I mean that was all kind of primitive stuff but nothing that much has changed you know on the surface yes but deep down no thank you did you hear yes that was great Pat we heard you um, um, thank you very it, true <laughs> Jamel, you're next. Yeah, uh, really right, quick. Yeah. Really quickly. Right, yeah. One of one of the solutions here that that I'm seeing is to also have more people that look like me on this call and involved with with things like this. So that's that's going to be one of my jobs, uh, regardless of the excuses, the frustrations, the irritations, and all the above. I understand all that but uh, it, it's a struggle. And last but not least, people can oppress you. People can hate you because they're ignorant and because you are black, but they can only oppress you because you are poor. Economics matters, money matters. And we gotta talk about that and not act shy about it. It's real. Peace and blessings. Thank you, Freddie. Thank you, Jamel. And we definitely have to do more of this. I see a bright future <laughs> working on lots of these issues. So um, I also wanted to add, it's not um, come up too much, but alternatives to policing is really, really serious. And we've heard reflections and echoes of it through people that were speaking. Um, I, um, David and Alice, I see your hand. I want to defer to Lolita and Cora um, because we have, let me see. We have about 13 minutes left and their portion is 10 minutes. So David, can you say it really quickly um, or should we move on to Lolita? I just wanted to let you know, and maybe you can share it with people. I just sent you an email with a link to the Highlander School Toolkit on Reparations, which is very informational for everybody and anybody who's got any interest in discovering what the movement for reparations is all about, awesome. what it looks like. Thank you, David. And it's in the chat. So we'll definitely- um, Not in the chat, it's in an email to you. you <clears throat> oh, in an email. Okay, thank you. <laughs> can you put it in the chat, the link, if it's possible? No. no? Okay. Uh, I'm a Luddite. Okay. <laughs> okay, go ahead, Lolita and Cora, take it away. Okay, thank you. I'll All be right. very quick. Hi, everybody. Uh, I am Lolita and I'm a board member and have been a member of SDA for more than 20 years. That was when I was 56 years old. It is so inspiring that SDA can get a group together that is diverse and inclusive to carry out its advocacy work in the city of San Francisco, and even as far as Sacramento and even Washington, DC. Today, we heard such inspiring work that SDA has done, but without your support could never be achieved. Let's continue to work hard to bring our voices to be heard as a group who need to be given what we deserve, pandemic related services, housing, medical benefits related to Medicare, Medi-Cal, social security, physical and mental health, food, transportation, and many more. This is our challenge. Let's continue to reach out to other seniors and people with disabilities, people of color, who can help us push through our advocacy work. I challenge you to bring one elder or disabled person who is a person of color or LGBTQ, young person like Shakira, to be an SDA member for our next general meeting. Our next general meeting will be on March 4th. Remember that, March 4th. I will be here to see if we can be successful in bringing SDA to our community and friends. I will also be celebrating my 77th birthday okay. in March. March 8th, 
which is International Women's Day. I will bring along some seniors and people with disabilities from my community. I am a Filipina and an SDA member, again, to tell you 20 years. The more diverse and seen we are, the better for others to hear our advocacy work. Thank you again, and I salute all of you. Thank you. That was awesome. So who wants to join? <laughs> Go ahead, Cora. Next month. <laughs> oh. Cora, I'm not sure we can't hear you. Are you still there? Okay. Can anyone else hear Cora? No? No, I can't hear her. No. No, I can't hear her. Can you hear me? Now we can. Can you hear me? Now we can. Now. Oh my goodness. This has been an <clears throat> exciting time for me to share in this meeting. And uh, my hopes and courage is really built up. And I want to share uh, a quote from Maya Angelou. One isn't necessarily born with courage, but one is born with potential. Without courage, we cannot practice any other virtue. With consistency, we can be kind, true, merciful, and generous, all honest. And my hope and plan is that everyone that join in today will reach one to come and join in with us here at SDA to continue the process and carry out the advocacy for others in behalf of reaching out to all seniors and disabled persons that we can grow and accomplish. So thank you very much. Awesome, awesome. Dawson, do you want to take over now? Yes. Sharon is not um, here. Thank you so much for uh, inspiring us to bring more members uh, to SDA uh, and make sure we have continuously this wonderful, beautiful, diverse space that we have right now. Um, before we jump on into the announcements, um, we do want to highlight um, a recent uh, tragedy that happened in San Francisco, Chinatown. Um, a Thai senior, uh, he was from Thailand, he was 85, and uh, he was unfortunately, not unfortunately, but really tragically murdered. Um, but the reason that we wanted to highlight it today is because uh, that um, the tragedy of, that, of him dying is being used to fuel uh, the divisions between Asian and black communities um, and is also um, highlighting kind of racial aggression against Asians, uh, specifically East Asian presenting people uh, with uh, the rise of COVID. Um, so we and I personally want to emphasize how um, we can reduce the violence in our communities without relying on, on expanding the police violence. Uh, because a lot of the narrative around that tragedy was saying that SFPD couldn't respond because of the budget cuts that they were having, oh, which um, again is only fueling the kind of, uh, it's a distraction uh, to be uh, p p um, pitting Asian and black communities against each other, especially with black being at the forefront for arguing for less police uh, to lead um, to less militarized police as well. Um, and we want to highlight that 
we can only get closer to uh, safety and liberation for everyone if we work together and not separately. Uh, this today it felt um, with the uh, Black History Month and Lunar New Year tomorrow uh, and New Moon today, if anyone is into that, um, it felt like a really appropriate time to uplift him uh, and his name, um, God, I had it up and now it's done. Um, okay, Vicha, sorry, my phone is like very slow. Yeah, Vicha Ratana Pakti. Yeah, so um, if I know this is a really hard way to start the announcements, but I also want to open up the space for everyone to either comment or share the announcement that you have. Um, and again, highlighting let's work together and let's build a, uh, a better future for all of us. We're working together as Asian and Black communities and not separate each other. I'm so glad you bring that up because we really need to be united. The only way we can uh, uh, succeed on anything is by being united. And united not just within the community, but united with other communities. I have worked at my level, whatever I can, to bring unity with the Black community and the Hispanic. I have suffered some attacks for that, but I believe it is necessary for everyone from every community to come together and, and, and to avoid the misunderstandings, to avoid the, the ideas that because something happened, it doesn't mean that the whole community meant it. So thank you so much. Thank you, Anna. That was powerful. We got to We got to hook up. We got. We got some work to do. Um, thank you. Go ahead, Dawson. And I am Anna B. Anna B. Thanks very much, Anna. Um, I also know we have three more minutes left uh, of our general meeting time. We'll be playing the slideshow at the end and some music that was suggested by our CJ members. Uh, specifically Tony, thank you. Uh, so um, if anyone has any announcements, this is the time for you. Jessica is trying to announce something. Okay, where is she? Hi, <laughs> I'm here. Um, can you hear me? Okay, good. Sorry, I'm having computer problems. Um, so a couple, oh my, I'm, I'm big now. Um, so a couple of Valentine's Day actions to announce. Um, Valentine's Day is a fun way to put some pressure on our public officials and get people to take notice of the issues that are so important to all of us. So um, just to remind people in terms of um, vaccine equity and, you know, like D. Anthony Jones was saying, this is not about saying that anybody has to get the vaccine or should or shouldn't, but it's about making sure that anyone who wants it and who feels like they in their community um, should have it has that right. Um, and so we are pushing the governor to open it up to people with high risk conditions of all ages. Sorry, I don't know if people can mute themselves. Are there people hearing background? Um, so I'll share the, the toolkit again. We are asking people if you can, print and, and send or make and, and mail a Valentine to the governor or to some of the key public health officials. Um, you can also do it on social media. It's, it's really cute and fun. And we can share that toolkit link again, if somebody has it handier, I'll do that. It's finally cleaned up. I apologize, the first version was a mess. And then the other Valentine's action we're doing is about um, long-term services and supports for all. We're part of this um, statewide coalition um, working with um, dem uh, yeah, domestic worker groups and other senior and disability groups and um, saying that we know we need to, to make sure that everybody has the chance, has the right to live in their homes and in the community. Um, and that means long-term services and supports for all. So similarly, there's information about how to send or um, email or post on social media Valentine's to them. And then lastly, um, <clears throat> we're trying to do a very quick and fun 
in-person socially distanced action tomorrow morning for Valentine's Day um, about vaccine equity. <clears throat> so if anyone is available and interested, um, it's gonna be small and kind of quiet. So um, please get in touch with me directly. Thanks. Hi, you were next. Yes, um, thank you. Um, I just posted it in the chat. Um, the Transit Justice uh, Group has a pedestrian safety um, um, online. You can just click on it now. There's one in Spanish and one in English. You can click on it now and just save it on your um, web uh, on your internet, and then you can get to it sometime today and just fill it out. It's very quick and easy. We've been doing this uh, for the last few years, in the beginning of the year, just to get an idea what uh, what are uh, the communities. Um, what are your concerns, your top three concerns when it comes to muni, pedestrian safety, and paratransit? And this is really important for us so we can um, gear what kind of um, campaigns we're going to have for this year. So just go to the chat if you can, click on the English one or on the Spanish one, hold it until after the meeting sometime today. Uh, you can get back to it and fill it out very less than five minutes. Thank you. Hi. Hi, can you send that by email? Yes, I can send it to you by email too. Oh, That'd by the way, vote, vote early and vote often. There's no limit on it. Email, yeah. I will send it to you too, Pat. Thank you. No, Hi, you tricked me because I thought I thought I could lower that hand in your window, but I couldn't. <laughs> that is my personal hand. <laughs> and That's I like to question. say one thing. Freddie? Yes. Thank you. That's this hand. That's clap for you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you, um, everyone, for coming. Are there more announcements? If there aren't, I have one. Oh, OK. Michael? And yeah. Uh, so uh, Great Panthers is having a Black History Month program. Uh, will racism, fascism, and capitalism dominate us and kill the world, world we dream of? Paul Robeson's life inspires us to say no. So it's going to be on uh, this coming Tuesday, February 16th, 1 p.m., and it'll be on Zoom. And the ID is 841-4605-9421. And it's in the chat. Thank you. OK. Awesome, awesome. Um, did I see other hands? Okay, Sharon, York, Dawson. Um, I guess we're gonna stay on just a few minutes longer for those that need to do announcements and can. If that's okay with whoever that's okay with, please stay. If you have to leave at 12, we are not going to, oh, it's already 12.03. If you have to leave now, I totally understand and respect your time. Go right ahead. Sharon and then Dawson and we can't Sharon, hear you. You're muted. you're muted still. It might be the headphones. If you take out your headphone, we might be able to hear you. Is that possible? Can I'm you hear that? The yes. Okay, I just want to say hi to everyone. And this is my uh, first Zoom meeting with back with you folks. And I'm still kind of figuring out how to maneuver, you know, certain things. And I'm just glad to be back. And I think uh, it's very inspiring. Welcome hi. back, Sharon. Uh, Thank you. Last announcement. Uh, so we have a survival school upcoming on Tuesday. I know Cora already signed up and Lolita is also there. Um, so anyone who has not attended survival schools so far, um, we are going to talk about resources on COVID. So food resources, housing. Um, sorry, I'm blanking. <laughs> <laughs> food resources, housing, medical care, uh, social, care social services, uh, and benefits, health. and mental health, for sure. Thank you. Um, so we have that prepared for you. It's going to be for Filipino seniors 
and all seniors and people with disabilities, uh, but we will have a Tagalog interpretation. Uh, and we are hoping to do more of the um, uh, community specific uh, survival schools uh, later on. So uh, if you feel like you don't wanna participate at this time, it's okay, talk to me and we can schedule something um, in the future. So thank you very much. Uh, again, talk to me if you like to register. So I'll send is it a... Dawson, is it, what days, is it Tuesdays or what days and how long is it? Yes, great questions. Tu starting next week, Tuesday, Tuesday 16th uh, and Thursday 18th, we're gonna have it for three weeks in total. So in, in February 16th, 18th, 23rd and 25th, in March, it will be 2nd and 4th, um, 10.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. And I will put a Zoom registration link also in the chat along with my email. 10.30 to what time? I'm sorry. 12.30. 12 12.30. 12 yeah. 12 yeah. I just typed it. I, I just typed it in the chat. Was there anyone else that... um? That had an announcement. Okay, so we're having our housing collaborative um, group meeting next Wednesday. I also put that in the chat, which is March 17th. St. Patty's Day is what it says in my calendar. I thought it should be a holiday, but <laughs> it's mm. not for us. So um, we will be having that from one to three. Um, <clears throat> it's on our website and the links will be sent out. If in fact you're newer, and are not on our housing um, list, please put your email or telephone number, contact, whatever way to contact you in the chat. Um, and I will, and our team will uh, be sending that information out to you. I'm gonna type my email address in the chat. Um, and thank you so much. Thank you everyone for coming. Uh, I hope this gives people a different perspective and, um, talking about uh, newer things that we're doing and things that we need to do today. I think it was a, a good wide range of perspectives. We got some actions and some things that we could participate in um, if we wanna do more. And this conversation has to, um... oh, thank you, Dawson. I put the wrong, <laughs> I put dot OCM. What is OCM? Anyway, um, <laughs> so thank you again. Peace, happy Black History Month. And um, onward and upward and do great work. And big thank you to Liliana and Olivia, I think our captioner, thank you very much. And all of our speakers. I love you, the African American. Thank you, we love you too. <laughs> and all, Tony, all of the RCJ members, Vanessa, Dorothy, Cora, Greg, all of our speakers, Jamel, thank you so Please much. Please be there. Adios, muchas gracias, señorita.